Not only is it going to be John Jones' last fight in New York City, but New York City is also the city that holds the last days of freedom for P. Diddy. We're going to talk about it and we're going to try to relate these two stories while simultaneously covering both of these events. So obviously, John Jones has mentioned earlier this week during the UFC's Noche event that he vehemently said that the Stipe fight was going to be his last fight. On top of that, for a long time, P. Diddy has been running the industry with absolute power to the point where he had absolute immunity to whatever was going on. You can go from the Tupac Shakur case in which he was accused of being the mastermind behind that. You can go back to uh, multiple situations with Shine and Jennifer Lopez in a 2000 club shooting. And then the same thing with John Jones. You can look at his life as well in the same trajectory. Now, there have been a lot of positives and a lot of negatives in John Jones's life. Obviously, he became the greatest fighter of all time, but at the same time had all of these problems going on. By the way, had a very similar situation as that of, let's say, Prince Nassim, where he accidentally had ran over somebody, and in which case he had to take full responsibility and enhance, and, 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 uh, and hence also really dehabilitate his uh, career in terms of uh, how he's being looked at and the image that he has in his uh, PR campaign. Well, John Jones has always come across as a very positive person. But in the midst of that and throughout the years, there have been cracks under that armor that he was trying to put up in the world. And what exactly is that? Well, it's a person that has a lot of demons and not only that, a person that has extreme impulsive disorders. In other words, he just doesn't know how to stop himself in certain situations. There's also similarities in what had happened during the uh, night of the Hall of Fame uh, inductee uh, ceremony that John Jones had going on with uh, the likes of P. Diddy and the situation with Cassie. All those you can sort of correlate into similar instances. But the one main theme that I think you really have to understand about this whole entire fiasco is that all good things at some point come to an end. And that is the overall story and the message that I think that is important to convey in this matter at hand that we are looking at. You see, for a long time, John Jones has dominated the light heavyweight division. And all of a sudden he came and decided, you know what, I'm going to go and jump up in a heavyweight division, fight Cyril Gunn, became the heavyweight champion of the world at a controversial moment where Francis Ngannou had left the company in order for him to pursue higher pay and bigger matchups. Well, now John Jones had an opportunity to basically move up his career in a different venture, which is what? The venture of being a heavyweight champion. Well, now he's accomplished that. And he ran across uh, Cyril Gunn with absolute ease, right? Took him down, beat him up, ground and pounded him, submitted him, showed why he was the not only the greatest light heavyweight, but possibly the greatest heavyweight. Well, now you have somebody like Tom Aspinall, which makes this whole entire situation a whole lot more controversial. In other words, here's a guy who has this situation going on where he is the interim champion. And while he's interim champion, he doesn't have the opportunity to prove to the world that he's not a paper champion. Very similar to Tommy Gunn in Rocky. Right? He won the title or the imaginary heavyweight title in this fictional world called Rocky. And Rocky obviously had been long gone and retired and left this champion. And what do they call him? They call him a paper champion. And this is what Tom Aspinall may have to deal with for the rest of his life. But guess what? The overall consensus right now, so many people believe that Tom Aspinall has John Jones's number. And as a result, maybe this is a reason why... John Hall, John Jones is going to put a halt in this particular matchup with Stipe and call it a day. And quite frankly, I don't blame him because let's face it, there is a limit and a time for everything. And that limit in time, once again, is going to go back to the story that we are covering with P. Diddy right now. So they found rounds and uh, drums of ammunition. Not only that, uh, actual traffic activities of which I can't really say the word out loud because guess what 
there's certain algorithms that you're going to, you get the point that I'm trying to convey to you. You know exactly what P. Diddy did. So as a result of that, he's been doing this for 20 some odd years. You got to ask yourself, what was the motivation and the reason behind doing this for that long? Well, it's because he can get away with it. Just like John Jones, he feels that he can get away with a lot of things because he was world champion. Not only that, he's the greatest fighter in the world. They literally moved a city from Las Vegas to Los Angeles in order to get the fight going with him and Alexander Gustafsson for the second time, which unfortunately in that situation, he got himself in a situation where it was a controversial drug test. In other words, he was micrograms of this much taking into the substance or whatever it was that he had took that was illegal at the time. But nonetheless, it was enough for them to stop the fight, move the fight elsewhere based on just what many perceive as John Jones's special treatment. And guess what? P. Diddy for a long time has experienced these special treatments, gotten away with so many things and some things that I've already mentioned. But just like John Jones, P. Diddy has also contributed in many positive uh, contributions to the world of entertainment. For example, he was instrumental with uh, The Locks, which by the way is a big hip hop uh, group in the East Coast that emphasizes lyrical and street metaphorical style of the East Coast backpack slash, uh, yeah, MC culture. He cultivated that group. He cultivated a whole bunch of different artists, French Montana in the modern times. Obviously, Biggie Smalls, uh, one of the uh, first and many prominent artists that was in his uh, stable. The list goes on. He's contributed so much on top of the fact that he's been in movies such as Get Him to the Greek with uh, Jonah Hill, in which, by the way, you could sort of see a little bit of an insight to P. Diddy sort of playing himself in that role as this asshole manager that, quite frankly, uh, has such a high demand on people in which you've seen him display in real life, real time, during the filming of Making the Band, in which he made those kids walk uh, from Brooklyn all the way to Manhattan for a cheesecake. So this is the kind of personality that he has, but guess what? This type of personality is the type that goes and feeds into, let's say, uh, the weaknesses of people, right? Uses that against them, uses certain leverages against them in order to gain whatever leverage that they want. As a result, he thinks that he can get away with it with immunity for a long time. But just like all things, you got to remember there is a limit. You got to understand this about P. Diddy too, right? This guy comes from a family of criminals, right? And uh, look, put it like this, right? His father was affiliated with Frank White, the same guy that Denzel Washington played in American Gangster, if you want to put that in perspective. So this is the kind of situation that he comes from. Here's another thing that I wanted to talk about with this situation, right? Just the perception that a lot of people have of P. Diddy. Here's the thing. Has P. Diddy done a lot of things that were somewhat sus or somewhat Elton John-like behavior, of which I'm not going to full-blown out say in YouTube? Yes, but here's the thing. A lot of people perceive that as less of a man or this and that. Yes, I agree with that. That is true. But here's another thing that I want to say about that. It doesn't mean that he's not a gangster. He just happens to be a gangster that's sus. And guess what? In this modern generation right now, there's a lot of guys that are gangsters and are sus at the same time. If you really want to put it like that. He was just, let's just put it like this. P. Diddy was ahead of his time. But once again, there's a limit in a time for everything else and guess what uh oh but no hold on going back to what i was saying about him being sus so a lot of people don't think that he's hard or he's gangster or whatever put in perspective this is the guy that picked up a kettlebell and tried to swing it at his son's coach in ucla because his son by the way was uh i believe a football player for ucla and he had to go and practice, but as a result, he wasn't there because he ha was hanging out with Ben Stiller in the East Coast for an NBA All-Star Weekend uh, trip. So P. Diddy thought that he could do whatever he wants, and as a result, he goes and he tries to swing uh, a kettlebell at his coach. He just believes that he has full immunity to do whatever he wants. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if P. Diddy thought in his mind that, you know what, this is my plane 
that I can transport whatever I want. I can put whatever I want. This is all personal use, all the cocaine that I have in the plane. This is what he probably thinks. You got to understand this is the kind of personality that he has. He just doesn't believe that he can do no wrong. But now there are consequences to this. There's a time limit to everything. And just like John Jones, he's understanding the time limit that he has going on with his life and his career and I think that he is making the right choice because guess what? John Jones can right now either go out like everybody else that has been slept and been uh, facing the ground and laid out in the twilight stages of their career. Or he can go out on top and remain the Mayweather, the next Khabib in his weight class and everything in between where he ends his career on top. He could either do that or... He could take a risk with Tom Aspinall and ruin his legacy. And I think that he doesn't want to do that. The money is not worth it. He doesn't think that it is. And he doesn't think that Tom Aspinall is that much of a seller. And it's not in any way to make excuses for him. I'm just telling you what's in his mind. Just like what P. Diddy has in his mind where he believes that it is all for personal use. It's my plane. I can do whatever I want. But the reality is there are consequences to life. And there are universal laws that we unfortunately cannot pass that limit of and these men are learning that in real time so don't forget to like and subscribe i will see you guys in the next content inshallah